Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. How are you on this wonderful Friday? Well, I first have to show you that there are some new t-shirts, some new Sloan Zone shirts. My friend Kate Spain, who is an amazing graphic artist, she designs them and we sell them on her website. Ta-da, it comes in sweatshirts and uh, just, just so cute for Valentine's. You can be ready. And, well, wait, there's more. She did another one. Look at this. Oh my gosh, the Sloan Zone. <laughs> I love this one. Okay, I probably have to wear this one tomorrow, so you'll probably see it again then. Just so cute. <sighs> okay, when you're there, remember, you've got different colors of the mugs. See you online. We've got lots of, lots of fun stuff. Check it out. Okay, it is a socialites day. And this week's uh, block is number 12 is Captivate from my friend Barb at Me and My Sister. This is a really cute block and I think it would look great in repeat, as I say all the time. But here's the block. So what I'm gonna do is show you my block, my version. So I'm gonna show, show you some other color variations that you might look at. Uh, so we'll go to the other side. So let's take a look at the colors that this block could be in because there's a wide variety, of course, that you could do. When I did this, I was pretty much, uh, with this is block 12, remember, of the socialites, I was pretty much looking for a two color block. So my go-to a lot for this quilt, for a lot of the blocks is the blue and red. I'm doing more of that than any of the other combinations. And then a little splash of an extra piece in the middle. So there we go. But what else do what else could I have done? Okay, staying with the red, I could have done red and aqua. That would be really good. And you might want to even do an aqua maybe that doesn't have quite I'm looking over here. You could do one more tonal like that. This is more green. See the difference? Uh it has a little bit more green in it. And that and this one reads much more solid, doesn't it? So that would be a color combination. What about green and peach? That would be gorgeous. So pretty, very springy, right? Very springy. And then the centers, you could bring in maybe some of the brown uh, or you could pick up a red for the center. You could pick up a red, that would be super cute. Then I was thinking, well, green and yellow are great. So there's a green and yellow and that has, is how that combination would look. Or how about tan and yellow? That is really nice. So this block lends itself to so many different things and it would be fabulous, like I always think, all of these blocks in repeat, because <laughs> this one would make a really cool alternate design uh, with those pluses. So every time, like if you had the pluses and then right here, another block where the plus is meeting. And so in the center, you would have these four plus signs and then you would have this angled piece with all of the half square triangles. That would be super cool. Maybe I'll do a, here, look here. This is how one, four blocks would look together. And then if you made these a little bigger, you made them in the bigger size, you would have to do less of them to get a full quilt. This is the six inch size and the pattern comes with a nine inch uh, block. Is it nine? Yeah, I have to check myself. <laughs> when you're only doing one size, I forget to, what are the other sizes? Three and nine. Uh, so in a nine inch size, that would really make a quilt grow really fast. It's just the same block rotated around. Okay, let's go back to the other side. So let me just put it up here on my website today will be a photo where you can see all of them. And I think we're about halfway with the blocks, maybe just a little less than halfway. So that um, it's moving along. I think we have like, like 11 more or something like that. I counted. We're getting there. So before we go on to the tidy up stuff, I have a few things. One is it is coffee break day. Lots of great coffee. What is it? January and coffee stuff. So coffee break. I went to the coffee break in honor. Thank you for those who've sent me Starbucks cards. Mwah. This coffee's on you and you and you. I do a iced latte decaf with, um, it's, it's an Americano. So I, sometimes I get the latte. This was an Americano. And then I put a little bit of soy in it. <laughs> so there you go. That's, that's the, that's my poison, but it is coffee break time. Definitely for me, uh, it's two 30, three o'clock. I want to take a break. I want to take a little walk over there. Just get out of the, the everyday norm. It was today very damp and 
icky and but it wasn't raining it's now raining but it wasn't when i went for my walk so i was super thrilled about that so it's coffee break day just just have a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage and think of all your quote friends today now the other thing is what did i have here oh yes i wanted to tell you that i watched a little do you watch the history the history guy uh he does a lot of great um you know topics and he did the sewing machine so down below in the description box and under my video at my website today is uh his link to his video so you want to watch that it's about 12 minutes long so it's kind of fun the kind of the back the old the old time history part of um of the sewing machine okay here's the disclaimer when you are the producer the videographer uh, <laughs> the setup and cleanup person audio and the host of the show sometimes you don't you forget things and so yesterday i totally forgot our organization segment it's like didn't it didn't even happen and i was actually loading the film on youtube you know loading loading up the video and i was like oh i totally forgot so today we will have a little bit of a a recap um and and a new assignment and then kind of a bonus assignment because i got that bonus assignment as I was rearranging something just now and I was like oh okay we're going to talk about this <laughs> so first of all from yesterday it the main assignment from yesterday was to look at your sewing machines all right some of you have one sewing machine you know where it is you might use it every day if you're lucky uh, maybe you, you use it on the weekends whatever but you have it it's out it's just one machine some of you have a couple of machines some of you have a whole um, troop of machines <laughs> you have a you know like a lot of machines so today take a look at where are your machines are they where they are supposed to be because what might happen is you may have been switching machines out or maybe if you are one who collects antique machines, you brought one in and it didn't get where it's supposed to go. Um, uh, well, for whatever reason, your machines are not where they're supposed to be. Do a tally on that and see where they're supposed to be. To be. Um, on the Facebook group, you can share a picture. You can just tell me in the YouTube here, just you know, talk about your machines. But I have got my main machines here. I've got three main machines, uh, four actually. The Solaris, which is the number one. This is what I use 99.999% of the time. I have the small Jubilant on the back from Baby Lock. Down in the black box under the table is my Featherweight, which is not real operational. It needs a little TLC, it needs a new cord put on it. And then I have the Tierra, which is a sit down um, long throat that you that is only for free motion quilting. And I have that right now in the other room, sort of as in storage, because I'm not using it. The Solaris does so much for what I need to do, and I'm not quilting my own large quilts right now. So if I start to quote my own large quilts again, I will pull out the tira, just pop it in the table. All I have to do is move the mat and put it down. So it's really simple. Uh, so it is actually the only one in storage. I no longer have any other really backup machines. Well, I have one older, I have a Destiny that I'm not using right now, which is when they upgraded me to the Solaris. I can't set up two, I don't have a reason to set up two machines. So that is my status. They're all where they should be. Uh, so that's good so today's assignment and then we'll do a little recap of other things from the organization today's assignment is assignment is to look at your cutting mats so i just pulled my rotating one because it would be easy to talk to about it like this just standing here so your mats uh, they do wear out and what will happen is that you will cut grooves you will cut grooves doesn't matter how good your mat is it eventually because you're cutting in the same spot all the time ask quilt shops they will tell you they go through mats like that because uh it's just it's just the nature of the beast so when you at home uh one of the things you want to do is sort of move your mats around like shift them rotate them so you're not always cutting on the exact same lines all the time because that will cut the grooves in there um, also just you know maybe you need to clean it up a little bit let's let's go a little closer to this one because they do get um you know like threads and maybe batting if you were trimming a quilt you know things just do get sort of stuck into the grooves the little grooves that you create now i always use an ulfa mat I pretty much, 
that's it. I don't like any other mats. I just like Ofa. They're consistent. They last a really long time, and that's the mat I use, the brand of mat. But this is <clears throat> this is this um, scrubber that Suzanne, our ambassador, sent me, and I love it for just going across and getting all those little threads up <clears throat> because that's the kind of stuff that's going to cause you to maybe your rotary cutter to just skip when it's going, something like that. So today, take a look at your mats and decide if maybe you have some that have lived the good life. <laughs> they have lived the good life and they need to maybe, you know, they need to maybe uh, go home. Uh, now some people, you know, not go home, but you know, you need to repurpose them into something else or whatever. People will flip them over. Now this mat doesn't flip over, but here I've got um, this small mat. You know, a lot of mats, this is one of these small ones. Uh, they flip over, you know, so you can use the other side. Um, <clears throat> that is a way to increase longevity. I do not use the lines on the mat at all. So I can flip it over. Some of mine don't have any lines on the back, which is perfect because I don't need the lines. The only time is like measuring the, the yardstick portion along the bottom edge. I use that for measuring out. Do I need three yards of, for the backing? You know, that kind of a thing. So there's your assignment for your mats. Assess them, decide, you know, <clears throat> if they are, you know, still worthy. And if you need a new mat, order one. Just do it, just do it. <laughs> now I'm going to show you first a little tour around a couple of things and then show you a bonus cleanup. Sometimes when you're cleaning up, only you really know the difference. And that's the case with the rollers. So these were actually, couldn't be stored in here because this was packed. And I have about at least half of what I had, maybe, maybe two thirds of it is gone. So that it will go to new homes. And then these were able to come over here instead of being stored next to my desk, between the desk and the cupboard, which is also cleared out. This space was actually full of stuff. I had extra mats. Um, and so those will go to new homes, cutting mats, extra cutting mats. Now in this storage, it may not look different to you, but there are a lot less small rulers. I consolidated where I had them in the gray basket, so I kept all the really current things. I've got a bunch of the smaller ones in a bag here and then bigger ones underneath. They're just layered because they are not something I use often. I don't have any problem just grabbing it out to look with, for what I need. And then th I put this in here. This doesn't really go in here. I will not know to look in here for this. This needs to go in the red filing cabinet over here and then that way yeah so let's take a tour here did I tour this with you well you're gonna see it now again so here's the top <laughs> this will go in one of these drawers and I, I think I showed you this because I've got sort of like glue stick stuff and then some other stuff down there which I don't get to very often so I could you know keep it in a container and then open the little open boxes so much nicer I can actually see what is in here. Amazing. I think this will be a good drawer to put this in. All right. So right now that'll go in the top and then the very bottom drawer, which I do have a few, a bunch of blades. Yeah, I think I showed you this, but oh well, you got to see it again. So <laughs> that, that is that. I know we didn't talk about cords, but I actually use these in my studio because I do not have carpet, I have tile, and this is how I keep from the cords having to go across because this unit is in the center of the room. So I have cords to the iron and all the camera equipment. On the other side, I have cords to lighting and my sewing machine. Okay, I told you I would show you the quilts that need binding. I believe I counted 23. So I have a stack here, a stack here, a stack here, some up here, not that, that side, and this one. That is the, um, from the color book. So yeah, this is my nemesis. Tell me what yours is. Show me if you dare. So I really do not know why I don't get to the binding. The only thing I can think of is that they're really, when the, the quilt doesn't have any place it needs to go, like when we've done a sew along and I've gotten it quilted and then I might be going to hang it up <clears throat> or um, it'll just go to charity. 
I, I, it's not as high a priority, so it's just sat there. And that's what three-fourths of those are. The other fourth are ones that I definitely, you know, they're on the short list. You know, they'll be, they'll get binding on them. Uh, so anyway, that is, that. so now next I have to take the bindings that I showed you in the basket the other day and match them up to what is those quilts. That's not a priority. Um, there's other stuff I can do first, so, you know, they're on the basket. Their basket's not overflowing anymore, <laughs> so that's good. All right, here's the bonus. I, <clears throat> this is a little tote bag that my friend Lena made me quite a few years ago now. Uh, she made it out of one of my fabric lines, and it is, um, sits out, so it has gotten really dusty. So not only is it dusty, like, there is actual dust here. I mean, I need to, like, rinse it or something in the cloth but the tops of the threads have gotten dusty from sitting out and so I need these threads to come out of here they shouldn't be in here anymore um, and then I put where they should be some of these are other weights see here's like a red spool which is 12 weight thread um, I don't know if there's anything oh here's the um, here's the very fine the finer weight on the spools and then these this I use a lot so this needs to go somewhere I can get to it. Um, I use the, you know, self, I use the needle threaders a lot. So this stuff can really should go down in the red cabinet down here. And then I'll wash this and, and do something, you know, put it, I put it away for right now because I'm not using it all the time. It's just collected a lot of dust. So your assignment, because this is what I'm going to be doing, uh, your assignment is look around and do you have that one thing that's sitting out that is collecting dust that you are not using? I mean, we know like the pin bowls collect dust, your pen cups, you know, when you've got the pen cups like this, the, you know, and periodically, you know, every, you know, maybe quarterly, I take this stuff out and wipe out the cups. They're going to, you know, they're collecting dust in there. But something like this, where you've got a project basket, maybe an open one, an open project basket, it could be cloth, it could be a woven, and it's just sitting around, you know, just collecting dust and the things in it are getting dusty. Today is your day to handle that as well, because your mats might be fine. So I'm sure you can find one thing in your area that needs dusted or needs disassembled so because it's not really serving the purpose anymore. All right, let me do two or three Q&As. Okay, uh, Gazelle, Gazella says, uh, how wide do I make my binding? I cut my binding, I do single binding. I cut it one and a half inches wide. Here it is, one and a half inches wide and then I fold over a quarter inch. And then I sew this part, the raw edge to the quilt, the raw edge goes to the quilt, and then that folds over and I stitch it down. So one and a half inch. And if you go to my tutorial page, there's a whole tutorial on my binding. Uh, Patricia says, what batting do I use in my wall hangings? Um, I, I use usually whatever batting scraps I have left. So it might be, um, you know, a, a 80, 20 blend. Sometimes I use warm and natural. If I have that, I find warm and natural to be, um, I think also they're 80, 20. They just tend, tend to be a little denser and firmer. And for wall hanging, it makes it flat. They're not sort of floppy. So I tend to like that. Uh, Roberta asked, do I sew my border fabric straight across the you know, or do I do it on a diagonal like you do binding you know when you're doing binding you sew on a, a diagonal often to you sort of um, take that seam and spread it across on borders I do straight across I go straight across on borders I I don't even know if I've ever done a diagonal on a border so straight across for me all right my friend you have a block to make for the socialites we're doing what are we doing captivate captivate love it okay so this is what you're doing and you have your mats to look at your sewing machines to look at and some sort of dust collector <laughs> all right I love you Mwah. thank you for being here in the Sloan zone <laughs> I'll see you online